My question is about your new order, uh, shutting down adult sports. They're suspended now, uh, everything from hockey to soccer, even bowling. But anyone under 18 can still practice and train with their teams. And even dance studios are now allowed to open their children's programs. So my question is, why the big difference between what's allowed for kids and even teenagers and what's allowed for adults? Yeah, um, this was, uh, as I've mentioned, we have a team that have been looking at all of the different fitness sport activities and trying to come up with our best guidance. And what we have found, and I mentioned this a bit yesterday, is that a number of these adult team sports are really very much social gatherings as well as sport. And unfortunately, those types of gatherings are, are leading to transmission events that are happening. And I mentioned hockey yesterday. We've seen transmission events in curling, we've seen it with a number of adult team sports. So now's our time, we need to step back from those, take that temptation unfortunately away and make sure that we're not giving those opportunities for, for the virus to take hold and, and travel and go um, between different communities as we have seen happen in the last few weeks unfortunately. So it was the advice of uh, the team from around the province that this was an important thing that they felt we needed to do now. So that is an additional restriction. Um, on the other hand, we know that uh, the supervised um, sports for, for young people have not been a source of the same type of risk and transmission. So we are, um, and we recognize of course the importance for young people of having these opportunities to participate in sport and how important it is. And again, these are things that we learned uh, from the unintended consequences of what happened in March and April last year. So we are hoping that we can can preserve safely uh, those opportunities for young people um, without the riskier parts of what they've been doing around playing games and travel. And so again, it will be focusing on skills and drills and keeping safe distances, but allowing those opportunities for kids to get out and, and participate. I will say I recognize absolutely how important it is for adults as well, and I encourage everybody to, to go out with uh, one or two of your friends, go for a run, go for a walk. There are those uh, sports like tennis, like uh, um, swimming, like golf, where people can still participate and maintain their safe distances. It's the, and we've, I've said this many, many times, it's the locker room, it's the before, it's the after, it's the going for a, a coffee or a beer after a game that has been um, the most uh, source of transmission, but sometimes it's very difficult because much of that is built into the culture of many of the adult team sports. So let's focus on our children, let's focus on giving those safe opportunities for young people to stay active for those sports that they can do um, right now. And these are really, um, I think, I don't want to take away from the importance of things like music and art and all of the other things that are important for young people and for all of us in getting through times like this. But it is those um, art and theatre and, and uh, music that we can do safely remotely um, and we can do uh, group classes re remotely as well. I look at uh, the gym that I belong to and we do a, a Zoom uh, circuit class on, on Saturday mornings. So there are great opportunities that we can come together and have um, opportunities for fitness in our lives and we're trying to find that balance of making sure we have those important opportunities particularly to protect those opportunities for young people. Uh, I'd like to ask Dr. Henry about what Shannon asked at the beginning there. Yesterday you mentioned that there was going to be a uh, restriction on indoor sports and then we found out it was outdoor sports but didn't see the order until today. Can you talk about why there are these delays to actually having the information in front of you? And are you concerned about the sort of confusion that causes uh, with people as they hear something and then need to wait for specific details? Yeah, um, it is what it is. Um, I believe I said yesterday and sometimes Perhaps I don't say it quite the way I meant to, um, but I was talking about adult team sports. 
um, and I didn't uh, recall making a distinction between indoor and outdoor. What we're talking about is adult team sports. Right now, this time of year, of course, most of those are hockey, curling, etc. Um, but there is still some soccer and other uh, team sports that are going on. So that was the intent. Um, and the order was written prior to my coming down here, but uh, it, it is a challenge because um, all of the orders uh, do come into effect. We have the ability to give an order verbally, and I try to be very precise in the language I use. Um, when the, that goes back, and we do it at the same time, and we try and have it ready ahead of time, the, the papering of the lawyer, of the order, as it were, but it needs to go through legal review, and sometimes in changing the legal language, some of the nuance gets um, lost or changed. So I think I just ask people to bear with me and to um, understand the intent of the orders, and that's what we're talking about. The intent of the orders is to try and reduce opportunities for this virus to spread, and in those areas where we have seen um, that are higher risk right now. And that changes, and it varies over time, and we come to understand as we're progressing through this pandemic, what are those situations. So um, yes, uh, I know for some people it is um, also challenging because they want to make sure it actually applies to them. And I know these are difficult things to, to have, especially if you're a, a business owner who runs a spin studio. You know, you need to really, um, even if you've done everything right, we know that that is a high intensity activity indoors and generally with loud music and crowded together. And that just cannot happen right now because of the risk of the virus transmission. So there needs to be other models that you can go to. And I know it's very challenging for people to accept that sometimes. And, uh, and we try and be as precise as possible. Do you have a follow-up, Richard? With these changes happening so quickly, you know there's a lot of disappointed people. I know everybody is doing their best to follow the rules and, and the guidance. And you know, one of those things is the cancellation of games. As you know, people would have had you know, kids, let's talk youth, because they can still practice. They would have games last night. They would have games tonight. And they may have got home from school and their parents say, well, your game's off tonight. You know, what do you say to, to those kids about the cancellation of these games that they have been looking forward to and training for and getting ready for? And how have we seen transmission specifically related to kids playing the actual games? Yeah, so my, my, my appeal to young people, and I know that um, things that you look forward to have been so adversely affected by this pandemic and no more than uh, young people have really uh, taken the brunt of some of these changes. And I know that is hard. But I also know that you guys are adaptable and you're superheroes in my mind. And I know that you can make this work. And being able to get out there and have those opportunities to be with your friends, to, to keep your distances, to keep things safe for this period of time. And it may feel like it, but it is not forever. It will change. We will get back to having games and uh, it will get back to being able to move around and travel and play against people in other communities too. But right now, um, we're still having challenges and it's not so much the kids out on the field, it's the away from fields of play and we tried to, to look at not, not having travel, no spectators to try and reduce those probabilities, but we're finding that it's still a challenge and in discussions with some, uh, many of the leagues, uh, that was when we, we recognized that uh, it made it a lot simpler for them to have very clear restrictions and the guidelines that have come out from VIA Sport. We are looking at modifying them to find some ways of having um, limited games in local areas, but it became very complex. So to simplify things, particularly now, because we are seeing raising numbers of cases in communities around this province and across this country, and now's the time where we need to, to just take a step back from that. And I know that many of the leagues, uh, the hockey leagues and soccer leagues and other youth leagues have already done this. Um, so it makes it very clear and, and equal for everybody. Next question is from Jane Side, North Shore News. Hi, Dr. Henry. Um, I have uh, the first question on a, sim a similar topic, I guess, of the uh, youth and recreation activities. Um, I'm, I'm wondering if you can 
tell us um, like roughly what percentage of the cases we're seeing are being spread by sports and recreation and and sort of where and how is this happening? For instance, we've heard about tennis facilities that were um, the cause of some cases and it, that doesn't really feel like it would be an especially high risk activity even though it's indoors and things like, you know, Tai Chi. Um, what has your team actually discovered? Is it like a certain number of people? Is it a certain level of breathing or, or aerosol uh, transmission? Um, is it the carpooling? I know you've talked a little bit about it, but it still seems to be um, something that's a bit confusing and uh, I'm wondering what information you have for us. Yeah, so I would say it's all of the above, and it's really difficult when people want to parse out exactly why can I do this and I can't do that and, and want to make analogies that, well, you know, it didn't happen in, to me and my club, so it should be okay. But the reality is it, it, it varies over time, and it varies depending on what activities we're seeing happen. But there are some things that are the co common. So what we have seen um, in the past few weeks to months is that about 10 to 15 percent of cases have been related to physical uh, fitness and sport activities and that's just that's an underestimate those are the ones that we know that we have linked and uh, you know I presented uh, some of the pathways that we have seen happen so what we do know is that those high intensity and this is what uh, the team uh, our sports team um, has been working on looking at high intensity um, activities indoors and some of those are we know there's been transmission in more than one occasion to numbers of people in the dozens um, and then subsequent transmission on from that is uh, the spin classes the high intensity interval training and hot yoga and if you think about it these are areas where you have groups of people that are close together very high breathing high intensity or lack of ventilation which by nature hot yoga is so it is those ones where we have seen most intense. The other one that uh, comes to mind is is uh, Zumba in an indoor class. So those are where we are seeing very intense transmission, and that's just very risky right now. They were fine in the summer with certain precautions in place, but what the what we thought were safe guidelines we've seen, and not just here, we've seen this around the world, don't work right now. So those ones are off the table for a while. Then what we were seeing is some of these lower intensity, the types of measures that we had in place for you know, regular dance class, martial arts classes and others, if you had too many people and they were too close together, even those lower intensity ones led to transmission events. So what the guidelines are re being revised based on the evidence that we've been trying to find from around the world to make sure that new guidelines can give uh, can allow those to happen with smaller numbers, greater space between people through this period of time and still be safe. And then we look at the team sports, and we've had uh, we've been working very closely, as I said, with Via Sport and others around different uh, team activities and sports activities. And the one-on-one -on -one sports activities, one-on-one um, -on -one fitness training in a gym when you're by yourself or with a trainer and all the appropriate safety measures in place, those seem to be lower risk and seem to be okay. But we are seeing that team sports for adults in particular are ones where it's the before play or away from the field of play interactions that we're seeing most of the transmission. And uh, tennis is a good example where we've had quite large clusters related to uh, a tennis club, not the activity itself, but the um, ancillary activities around uh, playing tennis, for example. So it varies a little bit, but all of these right now have one thing in common, and it's those um, coming together, sometimes indoors, but those social interactions that we have when we're too close to people right now, and there's that level of circulating virus in our community that is much higher than it was even a few weeks ago. So that is why we've put in these restrictions now, and they will last through the next few weeks. Jane, do you have a follow-up? I do have another question. Um, 
This is about the North Shore. Uh, Lionsgate Hospital, um, Minister Dix mentioned uh, Lionsgate when talking about the surgeries. I'm just wondering um, if either of you can give an update on the situation there. It's one of the acute care outbreaks. Um, I'm wondering if you can update in terms of how many people, how many patients have contracted COVID while at the hospital for something else, how many staff have contracted it, and um, just generally what the situation is with the outbreak at Lionsgate Hospital. I know that uh, uh, Vancouver Coastal has been uh, working with the team at the hospital, and I don't have the updated numbers with me right now, but we can we can get you that. Um, and there was a, a, an additional death from Lionsgate Hospital today. One of the people who died uh, was involved in that outbreak. Um, but I know the, the investigation and the control measures are in place there now.